This is Dr. Melody with Fit Plus Faith. Hello and welcome to our weekday morning devotions. We are going through a book called Faith, Fitness, and Food, and we are on day 19 today. So let me go ahead and get all this up and going. I'm going to update the little title right here. Good morning. Let's see who's able to join us this morning. All right, ladies, as you are hopping on, hey, love to see so many of you here. As you are hopping on, go ahead and say hello down below. Let me know who all is here and where you're coming in from. Hey, Paula, what's up? Good morning. So this morning is called All Things Are Possible. We are going to be very encouraged by this morning's message. What a wonderful message for a Friday. All right, perfect. So, and while you're hopping on, let's go ahead and share hit that share button right now. Share, tag a friend. If there's a girlfriend that comes to mind that you think would be encouraged by this message or by these weekday morning devotions that we do, go ahead and tag her below, share this out. And then of course, the more that you engage with your comments and with your um, loves and likes, then the better it is for our video, uh, for more people to see it and uh, and interact with it. And so, and then we have great discussions together. So thank you ladies for being here. Good morning, Paula. Good morning, Jamie from Spokane. Good morning, Barbie. Good morning, Belinda. Good morning, Marianne. Great to see you ladies here this morning. I love it. What a great group we have on this Friday morning. And so just a side note, ladies, my neighbors are doing some work in their trees. And so that's lovely um, and loud with a nice, <laughs> um, electric saw of some sort. So I do apologize if you can hear that in the background, but hopefully they'll be getting done soon. And I closed the door to try to make it a little bit quieter. So, all right, here we go. So this morning we are talking about all things are possible. I love this. I have been thinking for the past year or two that I wanted to get a new tattoo. And regardless of what you may think of tattoos, yes or no, yay or nay, I know that uh, there's different viewpoints in the Christian community, but um, I already have two and they express my faith. And uh, I know a wonderful, absolutely talented tattoo artist uh, that I think I wanna get this verse that we're talking about this morning, get this one um, as my next one somewhere. So we'll see what happens with that. But this morning we are talking about all things are possible. The verse we're starting off with this morning is Matthew 19, 26. It says, but Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Our life and our potential is absolutely limitless when we surrender it to the Lord. And so that is uh, just beautiful encouragement for us this morning. So it says, are you secretly afraid that you simply don't have what it takes to achieve a higher level of physical fitness or maybe a higher level of anything in your life, right? If so, please remember this, with God, all things are possible. God has put you in a particular place at a particular time, at a specific time of his choosing. He has an assignment that is uniquely yours, tasks that are specifically intended just for you. And whether you know it or not, he's equipped you with everything you need to fulfill his purpose and achieve his plans. And I would like to add, and if you are not yet fully equipped for what you need in this season, in this upcoming assignment or task that the Lord has for you, he will equip you as you move forward in faith. So we don't have to wait until we have it all together to do what God is asking us to do. He will equip you and lead you and guide you step by step to get to that level and to that point. But he wants to know that you are on board, that you say yes to him and his plans and that you just move forward and he will do the equipping, whether it's providing you resources, bringing certain people into your life, uh, whatever that may be, he will do it. And so we can rest in that and that is, that's huge, right? That, that we know that we're not alone and that God will help us along the way. 
So the next time you find yourself stuck in the quicksand of self-doubt, refocus your thoughts and redouble your prayers. Then turn everything over to the Lord. When you let him take over, there's simply no limit to the things that the two of you working together can accomplish. Amen. So I would love to hear from you ladies this morning. What is it? Do you have an experience that you feel the Lord has called you into? Some, some thing of leadership, and maybe it's specifically reaching out to a certain person, um, a certain task. Are there those things that you feel God is calling you towards and that you can see that he has been equipping you in order to do it? Uh, what is, there's another great quote. I wonder if it's going to be in any of these. No, there's another great quote, and I don't want to get it wrong, but it's something to the effect of, um, God equips the called. I know that there's a, there's a first part to that, but it's basically, uh, a, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but it's something like, um, Oh, I'm just getting it wrong. Anyways, I'm so sorry. I'm getting it wrong in my head and then I'm hearing this stuff going on outside. But anyway, it's that God equips the called. What you are called into, he will begin to equip you for it. So I'd love to hear, ladies, any of your feedback or stories that you may have related to this. Hey, Becca. Oh, I love that you're joining us from London right now. What time is it in London? I'd love to know. Probably in the evening sometime. So super great to have you here as well. So... Uh, maybe it's like God does not qualify the chosen, he equips the called, something like that anyways. But it's that same message that we can trust that whatever God is calling us into or whatever is our next task moving into life for this new season of life, he will equip you along the way. You don't need to do it all yourself and you don't need to meet a certain level or standard in order for him to be to use you in order for you to be a vessel and used by him. Morning, Diana. Thank you, Susan. God does not call the equipped, he equips the called. Thank you, I was so right on track, but I didn't have it exactly right, so I appreciate that. Becca says it's 3 p.m., you're having a late lunch while watching. I love it, so 3 p.m. later today, super great. All right, ladies, so now let's move into some other verses from the Word. So if you have a pen and paper, you want to write these down. These would be super great for your own study and meditation later today in some quiet time, um, or you can type them into the comments below. But it says, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Listen to that verse that it is not that we are supposed to do all things in our own strength. It's that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So in our weakness, he is made stronger. We don't have to be ashamed of our weakness or what we feel is uh, things that make us less than. We don't have to be worried about those things. We can actually rejoice in those things because where we fall short, that is where the Lord comes in. That is where he is able to show off and then strengthen us and do amazing things through us. And then he gets all the glory because we know that we couldn't have done it on our own. And this applies to your health journey, but this applies to anything in your life. Morning, Jennifer. I love that you're watching and listening at work this morning too. Luke 18, 27 says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, therefore do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Absolutely beautiful. Your potential does not end when you reach a certain age or does not diminish as you grow older. God just uses you in a different way. And so I love this, that the inward man is being renewed day by day. If you stay connected to the Lord and, and connected to his word and asking to be used by him in every season of life, every age of life, no matter where you are right now, he will do it. We are always going to be effective and useful in the kingdom in some way until he calls us home. Genesis 18, 14 says, is anything too hard for the Lord? I love that encouragement because sometimes when we feel like things are too difficult, 
that uh, I just don't see a way, right? Because our vision is limited. What we can see as possible is limited. So when we feel like we're stuck, when we feel like we're running up against a wall, we don't know how we're gonna get through. Hey, morning, Abigail. Then we can remember that is anything too hard for the Lord? Absolutely not. I think sometimes we have to realize and remember who God really is because we so often put him, put limitations around him and put him in a box, right? That things can only get accomplished, that we can see the logic in how that's going to happen. But God is outside of our logic and we can praise him for that. Abigail says, Philippians 4.13 is my go-to scripture when I'm stuck or overwhelmed. I love that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Beautiful. And then Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said to them, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Jennifer says, this is my staple verse. Especially lately, he has shown me to keep my eyes outward and not inward, to keep him in the center and I'll stay in balance. Philippians 4.13. Absolutely. So beautiful. That is a such a beautiful verse that so many, I love that so many of you are having that to be your life verse, uh, your verse for use uh, for encouragement. That's beautiful. So let's go into some quotes here uh, by some notable people regarding possibilities. Hey, Laura. Laura says, turning 60 this year. And sometimes I wonder what he has for me. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. I think as we all move into new ages and new stages of life, so whether we have a big change of life, we have a new job or we lose a job or we become empty nesters or we move, anytime there's a big something. So, you know, stepping into a new age category, all these different things. Yeah, we can wonder, what is God going to do here? Because I don't know and I don't see it. But if we have our heart's desire to still be used by him and then we relinquish that over to him and say, God, however you want to do it, use me. I am yours. I want to be used for the kingdom. I want to be a blessing to those around me. I want to have you work through me to impact those around me in, in all ways, little and big, whatever they are. I just want to say yes to you. Use me. He will, the Holy Spirit will inspire you. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you, will open your eyes to different things and it will happen. And so that's, it's beautiful to think that at all times, it's new possibilities that we are stepping into. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, we've got, Diana says, her too. So we've got a few ladies that will be turning 60 this year, stepping into a new decade of life. So beautiful. So we have uh, some quotes about possibilities here from Beth Moore. She says, God's specialty is raising dead things to life and making impossible things possible. You don't have the need. You don't have the need that exceeds his power. So basically your need will never be greater than what he can do. So awesome. <laughs> Paula says, thanks Diana for writing down the scriptures. Sometimes this old lady misses it. You are too funny. And Abigail turns 50 on Tuesday. I love it. This is so wonderful. Happy birthday to all of you. Hudson Taylor says, I have found that there are three stages in every great work of God. First, it is the impossible. Then it is the difficult. Then it is done. That's interesting. I have found that there are three stages in every great work of God. First, it is the impossible. Then it is difficult. Then it is done. We can trust him no matter what the circumstances may look like, whether they look difficult or not. If he started something, he is faithful to complete it. And we can trust in that, that he is faithful to complete in you what he has started in you. And then Chuck, uh, Chuck Swindoll, a few different quotes from him says, we are all faced with a series of great opportunities, brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. Great opportunities, brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. When God does the impossible, why does he do that? And why does he use us to do it? When God does the impossible, it is so that 
he is the only one that is going to get the glory and the credit for it. It's so that it can become a testimony to other people of who he is and what he can do is when the impossible happens. And then he also says, alleged impossibilities are opportunities for our capacity to be stretched. Alleged impossibilities are opportunities for our capacity to be stretched. I agree with that. It is an opportunity for us to stretch and grow in what we think is possible, in what we've seen God do, in what we think he can do in us. It stretches our faith. It stretches our trust. It stretches many things to see that happen. It's how we grow. Yes, Diana says, impossible, difficult, done. Exactly. And then uh, Soren Kierkegaard says, a possibility is a hint from God. A possibility is a hint from God. I love possibilities because they're just so much fun to think of what could be, to think of what can happen, and then to begin to pursue it and see what will happen, or to present that possibility to the Lord and say, here's what I think is really great. Do we want to do anything with this, right? Do you want to use me in any way? Can you open this door? You know, can you open this door for this possibility? Will you walk through that with me? Uh, will we, can we see what you can do together? Can we see what you can do for others to, to see your glory, to see your greatness, to see your power? And so I, I love possibilities. I see them around all the time and it's exciting. And as an entrepreneur, sometimes a little overwhelming because I think we tend to see more possibilities than other people and that can get overwhelming sometimes or we can get ahead of ourselves. But I love that he said possibilities is a hint from God, a hint of what is possible, a hint of what could be. And that's exciting to think about. <sighs> Sounds good. All right, ladies. So, oh, we need to go into our food, fitness, and today's focus tips. And if you have any stories that are coming to mind about impossibilities, I would love to hear those. Any impossibilities that you have seen in your life that happened, that came to pass, that seemed impossible, but they came to pass, and it was a great testimony to the Lord. Would love to hear if you have any stories or examples like that. So yeah, that's awesome. I feel like um, I was born as a preemie, two months as a preemie, two months early, and my doctors, my mom's doctors, didn't know she was having twins. This was back in the early 80s when technology was not as good clearly as it is now. And so they didn't know, they didn't detect. And so there we were born two months early and uh, my mom had the first baby and then they said, wait, we think there's another one in there. And so and that was me, number two. And so that was a great impossibility to even know that that was happening and a great impossibility. The, the likelihood then of survival back in the 80s for such a case was very, very low. And so, uh, man, this is a cool story real quick that I wanna share. And so then, then that happened, right? A great impossibility to even make that survival rate. And I did, my twin sister did not. And so that was very devastating because my mom is going into labor thinking she's having one child and then she has two and then one of them doesn't make it. So that's this huge, um, a very overwhelming situation and unexpected situation. But it was amazing though that I was still able to survive, that I survived, that God helped me to survive. And then I have not had any of the common um, conditions or common ailments that preemies end up typically having. I didn't have any of those. So there's no evidence in my life that I went through that when I was born. There's, I mean, God has completely restored me. And my mom always says that, uh, that I'm a miracle baby, right? And, and it's beautiful to see, and that's truly what happened. And so I don't have any of the complications that normal preemies typically end up facing in life. And so that's amazing. And then what was really cool, listen to this and then we'll, we'll finish up. What was really cool was 
that I was going through PT school to become a doctor of physical therapy back in 2007, 2008. And one of my internships, and I'll get to Jennifer's comment in just a second, one of my internships had me interning at the hospital that I was born, okay? You guys, to even understand how that even came about, that of all the places that I could intern, of all the places, and I didn't choose, that I was placed back at the hospital that I was born. So then, since I was there, I thought, well, I know that it's, you know, 28 years later, but I wonder if my physician who birthed me is going to be here. And he was. Not only was he there, he was retiring soon. So he would not have been there had I come any later. So he was there, he was retiring soon. And I was able to meet him because he was giving a lecture to all of the other nurses in the neonatal unit that he still worked in. He was giving some big lecture. And so I went to the lecture, I sat there, I introduced myself to him, I stayed to be able to speak with him and then he acknowledged me in this meeting. He acknowledged who I was and he said, this girl here, and a little bit about my career path and what I was up to, he said she was one of our miracle babies of the 80s. Because he understood that technology was nowhere where it is today like it was back then. And that the mortality rate was very high for those in my situation. And so I met him, he acknowledged this, he acknowledged how amazing it was that I was sitting there as a testimony of, of life and of the care that they give at that neonatal unit and then everybody was able to, um, you know, to recognize and to applaud and, and to, to feel really amazing about what they do there in the neonatal unit and it was just the most amazingly impossible story and situation. I, I never could have orchestrated that or tried to make that happen or tried to do that on my own. Like, God literally put it all in place and to have that happen before he retired. I mean, the whole situation is just craziness and absolutely amazing. Jennifer says, moving out of my mom's state, California, just me and my dogs to Georgia. Never been so far away from my family or friends going where I've never been and not knowing anyone. It brought me new life. From then on, life has been a testimony with lots of possibilities seeming impossible, but I'm living it even now. Jennifer, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that story. Diana says, my grandson Ashton was born at 30 weeks, 2.3 pounds. Yep, very similar to me. All of his organs were great, but his lungs needed to get stronger, yes. He was on breathing machine for two weeks at the lowest level. After seven weeks, he weighed almost five pounds and was able to go home. What a miracle. He's a very active toddler now and runs all the time. We thank God for him every day. That's so beautiful. So beautiful. What a thing to celebrate, Diana. Absolutely. Diana says, I'm so happy with your testimony. I'm crying. Oh, Abigail, I know. It was so special. It was so so ridiculous, like so amazing. And I've, I've truly felt, I've truly felt, especially with my relationship with the Lord, growing up in the church, having a relationship with the Lord at a very young age and having a family that, that supported um, and encouraged that. I feel like from the beginning, I just can't believe that God placed me in my family like he did and that he has done what he has done for me from the very beginning. It's amazing. It truly is a beautiful testimony of, of what I feel that God has blessed my life. It's just a blessing. So beautiful. Jennifer says, awesome testimony. God is so good. Yes, Diana, we serve an amazing and mighty God. Absolutely. Susan says, hey, Sue, good morning. Says, possibly being called into a new ministry. Cool. Realizing today that I'm afraid because of issues with the church from the past. Okay, absolutely. Well, we will be in prayer for you as well, Sue but I love that you are being called into something new. And I pray that you don't allow the fear to stop you. You know, the enemy wants to use the fear and the situations of the past to hold you back from stepping into something new that God could use you in a very powerful way. And so we will be praying, and I pray that you as well go into spiritual warfare over that fear 
that you know and that you reassure yourself that fear is not of the Lord and that this is a new season with new people and new situations. Ask the Lord for wisdom and discernment and guidance and blessing and favor over this new season that you're going into knowing that he is with you and that it, it does not have to be a repeat of the past. Diana says, God had a huge plan for you and we are the recipient of that. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. That is my pleasure and my joy. Absolutely. Abigail says, now I understand your passion for helping people. <laughs> well, good, 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 good ladies. Yeah, absolutely. It's always been my prayer that uh, that the Lord will use me in whatever way he wants, uh, but but prayerfully in a powerful way to help others. And all of us have our testimonies. That's what's cool. We all have a testimony in some way or another of what God has done that we cannot take any credit for whatsoever. And it's so beautiful because it just shows his might and his power and his glory to other people when we share about it. That's what's so awesome. It was intended for us, but not for us alone. It is intended to be spread as a message of hope to others. So, so amazing that we, that God allows us to have such a beautiful and intimate relationship with him. Diana says, yes, Sue, fear is a liar. Just be in prayer and know that God has a plan for you. When he brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Yes. Beautiful. So let's finish up with our food fitness and today's focus tips. Thanks for being here uh, with me this, this late today. I know we're going slightly longer today. So thank you for being here. Food tip says focus on nutrition. When shopping for healthy food, make your calories count. Be sure to strike a balance with nutrition. Try to find foods with the most nutrients for a given number of calories. And you're going to find that from whole foods and even more from whole foods from organic whole foods. Yes, it does make a difference. Okay. It does make a difference. The nutrient density in organic foods is higher than GMO foods. And so if we want, and when we eat our body, our cells are looking for nutrients. That's how they tell us that we are full is they find satisfying nutrients that, that met their minerals and their, uh, the, what else am I looking for? Uh, nutrients and minerals and some other word that's escaping me at the moment but our, our body is looking for that. And when it receives it from the food, all those wonderful, wonderful vitamins and antioxidants and everything that we get from eating healthy whole foods, then the body senses that, okay, I'm getting like a jam packed power of nutrients coming in and it's nutrient dense. The food amount doesn't need to be a lot, but the nutrient density is a lot. So then the body registers that and then says, awesome. I am fuller faster because I got my nutrient needs. But if you notice that when you eat processed food, when you eat fast food, when you eat food that has low nutrient density, then you don't, you may eat a large volume and still don't feel satisfied, still don't feel, um, satiated. Your body wants more because it's trying to find the nutrient density. So we want to give our bodies high nutrient density through whole foods. Organic will be even more. And then you don't need a large volume, but the body gets what it needs and says, all right, I'm good. But otherwise these empty calorie foods, these empty nutrient foods that we eat, then our body says, give me more, 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 more. I'm not yet full. I'm still hungry because I'm still seeking certain things that I'm not getting. Hey, Chrissy. Chrissy says to Sue, we've been listening to this song. Fear is a liar in our house on repeat this week, fighting through a lot. Thank you for sharing Chrissy. And that is a wonderful song. When you are feeling afraid, when fear is setting in, when you see the results that that's what's happening underneath the surface, then love it. Go to different songs that can encourage you. Fear is a liar. What a beautiful song. So thank you for sharing that with us as well. And then Diana says, wow, that's why we can eat so much junk food. Exactly. We can just eat more and more and more junk food. And they've done, you know, processed foods and food scientists have figured out different ways to make the food in a way that it doesn't trigger certain satiety in our body because it's not natural. So they're, they're making it not trigger it. So then we're going to eat more like the whole food science thing is absolutely fascinating. 
I can give you resources if you want to know more about it. Uh, but we really need to understand that the body is seeking nutrients. It's seeking a high density of, of really good things, natural things for us. And that's what we want to give it. All right. And then our fitness tip says, train yourself to think and speak positively about your health and your diet. Train yourself to think and speak positively about your health and your diet. The words you use impact your thoughts and your thoughts have a way of becoming reality. So instead of using words like fat, say fit, change I can't to I can, change helpless to strong. You get the idea. I, I fully agree with this. There is, and I could talk about this forever, so it's not the time for it right now, but our thoughts and therefore our words are so amazingly powerful and God has made them that way. But we are the ones that need to take our thoughts captive and we are the ones that need to use our mouth and our tongue to speak life, not death. Excuse me, and we can speak death in different ways. Not like we're cursing someone, but when you think about that, if all I do is talk negatively to myself, if all I do is use words that have negative connotation to them and I'm not being mindful of it, then I'm actually speaking death to myself. So if I begin to change my thoughts and change my vocabulary, especially how I talk to myself, but even just in general to the world, and I begin speaking in more positive ways, using more positive words, then it will absolutely make a difference. And so one small example of this is sometimes my husband will say, like, we'll be going to do something and he'll say, um, yeah, you know, let's go do that, blah, 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 so and so, it'll kill a few hours. And I'm thinking, it'll kill a few hours? I don't wanna kill my time that is my finite resource that I never get more of. I don't wanna kill my time. I would like to enjoy my time or spend my time in a different way or invest my time in doing something. So the words that we speak also have different connotation in our brain, but it goes unnoticed. So we need to begin to be more proactive and attentive to those things. So start looking for that in your daily life. Are there any words with negative connotations that you seem to use? So killing our time and, and just other different different things like that. And so, especially when it comes to how we talk to ourselves about our body, if we're not happy with our body, you know, what are we saying? What words are we speaking? Or are we saying more positive things like, I may not like where I am now, but I like where I'm going. You know, I may not be happy with where I am now, but I'm not staying here, you know? And so we can acknowledge the things that we're not necessarily satisfied with, but yet we're not saying, well, good grief, you fat slob, you know, what's wrong with you? Why don't you go do something about it? That's a completely different way to talk to ourselves, right? <laughs> so we need to be aware of those thoughts. Abigail says, yes, my thoughts are my daily battle. Well, keep battling, girl. You will make the changes the more that you begin to take your thoughts captive and begin to replace negative words with positive words. And then Diana says, I've been challenged in this month of Thanksgiving to not complain and to not think and speak negatively. Awesome. Belinda says, yes, I need to be more deliberate about what I choose to speak over myself. Absolutely. And then today's focus says, think about God's power to help you bring about miraculous changes in your life. It is God's power that will help you be, that will deliver you, that will help you to do the impossible, that will make the impossible happen. It is by God's power that thing, those things happen. So think about God's power to help you bring about miraculous changes in your life. If you feel that you in your own strength and your own power cannot get yourself unstuck, that's okay. You were never meant to do it on your own. It is time then to ask the Lord for help and to praise his name and to affirm who he is and what he can do and that his power is available to you in your life. Abigail says, thank you, sisters. These devotionals are always a blessing to me. That is awesome. Diana says, when we speak out loud negatively, we give the enemy an opening to lie to us. Yes, we do not want to give the enemy a foothold in any way. 
So thank you ladies for being here with me this morning. What a great devotion to end on our Friday today, wrapping up this week. Again, these are weekday mornings. So I will see you on Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific time, Monday morning, all right? So have a wonderful rest of your weekend. For those of you that are with us in the Healthy Christian Women Facebook group, I will see you inside the group over the weekend. And for those of you that are jumping on board and joining our brand new Fit Plus Faith Lifestyle membership, then welcome to you as well. We are having a uh, early bird special now. The pre-launch special ended October 31st, but now we have an early bird special uh, that will go from now until the end of the year, December 31st. So all of you that join us in the Fit Plus Faith Lifestyle membership will still get that early bird special until December 31st. And then come January 1st, 2019, it will be at the full price. All right. So if you want to have more resources and training and intentional moving forward in your health, mind, body, and spirit, all of that is taking place inside the Fit Plus Faith Lifestyle Membership. And you can learn more at fitplusfaith.com slash join. All right, everybody, thank you guys so much for being here with us today. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you Monday. Bye.